Okay, so picking up where I left off last week, um, on a video, anyway, uh, don't know when this is going to air, so, picking up where I left off on the last video, um, I'll turn you around here and show you what's going on. Okay, so I've got the floor cut out, and also the, uh, firewall, uh, was a bit of a laborious task, the last couple of them I had it kind of easy because the cars themselves... Well, the last one was pretty easy because the car was all just screwed together. It's on a, in the process of being restored, so the floor pan and everything was just screwed in. So um, uh, this was a little bit tougher because um, <clears throat> uh, it's kind of hard when there's multiple layers of sheet metal, know where to cut, when to cut, you know, so you don't uh, cut through stuff that you need. I like to minimize uh, what I cut off just in case I need it. So... Um, what I have here is uh, we're aligned with the pinch weld for the most part. Uh, these these are a little larger, these little reinforcement pieces for the hinge plates, um, which I wanted to maintain the hinge plates. Everything um, from the pinch welds out is what I was looking to keep. It was a little harder to decide where to cut the, the dashboard. Uh, while I do have, um, it is about three inches um, taller, I'm not sure how high up into the car I'm going to be bringing this. So, But I needed to... Uh, maintain some of these mounting points for some of the brackets that hold the windshield up. I had to, uh, in order to access this area here, I had to remove a, a plate off the top here that has a lot of stuff mounted to it, uh, windshield wiper stuff. Uh, anyway, um, on the inside, there was a double skin. You can see there's a skin here, and then, then there's the skin from the firewall itself. So I had to pick a point where to do that. The most difficult spot was down in here because there was a lot of stuff uh, coming together right in there. On this side, I thought I'd make quick work of it by using a uh, plasma cutter, but that quickly turned into a mess. So I went back to my tried and true using a multiplicity of uh, grinding wheels, uh, different... Uh, electric ones and pneumatic ones whatever would fit into the space this is my favorite right here which is basically a 90 degree uh, grinder but it's a heavy duty one from mac tools it's got a lot of horsepower and um you can tuck up into small spaces with a small disc this one's good because you can get in tight areas going straight forward um it's a bit dangerous you know you got to keep your your face out of the uh line of the where this is uh, uh flinging debris so it's good to wear a full uh, face shield when you're doing that and then you get stuff in your face um and then also it's good to wear a mask because uh inhaling this stuff here as it uh, grinds away is not a good thing for you i spent years uh just doing that unprotected and it's not good for you there's a smaller one uh, that I use, but this one here is if I really got a nice straight cut like I did down the rockers. It's got a lot of horsepower, a uh, little bit bigger disc, a little bit more speed, a little more depth. But it kind of takes all of it, including Sawzall, a little long blade. Um, also, I've um, got an air saw somewhere here, basically a reciprocating air saw for real tight, tight places. Anyway, I'll have to go back in here and um, I cut it, cut the floor pan away um, just beyond the pinch weld here. And um, so what I've got to do is then I've, I've got to clean this all off and drill out all of these spot welds and remove the rest of it. Um, it's kind of hard to do that with everything in your way. Um, and then also I have to cut the rest of this floor pan in the back. I was going to save this because there's a carpeted section that comes out that's just dedicated to this area here. But I I figured I, I'm going to use as much of the uh, Camaro floor pan as possible. And I think I'm going to want to extend it back into this area here. I'll leave the upright portion because that's a real, uh, it's not necessary to cut that out. So, and there's nothing comparable in the Camaro. Uh, so, um, the best place to mend it would be right here along that back side there and I'll try to do that as neat as possible we'll see how that goes um, at any rate that's where we're at with that um, this is the floor pan that came out of it it's a pretty decent floor pan I'll rust it out it's got some surface rust that's about it these cars are usually 
uh, the foot wells and especially these rear uh, foot wells are usually pretty uh, chittered up as they say um, you know on the uh, modern challengers and stuff I was lamenting the fact that they're filled with foam in this area here so it's a fire hazard when you're trying to cut them apart and uh, you got to be careful you know if you're using a, an abrasive wheel or something like that throwing sparks that you could set that stuff on fire well it's not readily uh, readily uh, uh, flammable in other words it's not it won't blow up or anything like that uh, I was told it will support a fire, whatever that means. Once it's going, it'll it'll keep going. But checked out this stuff. This is in, was in there, still in there, and as you can see, I set some of this on fire, which was always fun. Anyway, so that was a little sideshow right there. Anyway, you can see that I initially started to uh, try to release this uh, inner panel by drilling out all the spot wells, and um, that proved to be not necessary. At any rate, I will uh, probably toss this up onto the chassis so that I can put the steering column back in so I can move that uh, vehicle around a little bit easier. Uh, even if it's just to move it onto a trailer to take it to the junkyard. At any rate, that's where I am with this so far and uh, we'll just keep on moving. Okay, so I've um, um, got um, both of these rockers kind of cleaned up. I'm leaving them boxed, the weather boxed from the factory. Um, normally I'd like to put some more uh, structure in inside here, but um, I picked a different spot on that uh, Camaro chassis to, uh, to add the structure to. And it's from this point over, um, I'm going to add try and add a, a frame rail, see how that goes. I'm probably going to take that floor pan out. I wanted to leave it in there, but it's just going to be a problem uh, working around everything. Uh, it's going to be a little bit funky because I got a lot of structure under here that's kind of supporting the bed. I mean, it's not going to fall through or anything. It's it's completely welded all the way around the side set of quarter panels, but um, uh, it's kind of an inchworm thing like I've done before when I'm not sure where I'm going. I just kind of take a little bit out here and a little bit out there. Keep measuring and see what's going on. Um, I've got a uh, mark over here that I figured out. That's how much lower this portion has to be in order for uh, the bed to go over. Uh, it's about three inches. And that has to do with me trying to raise this up also an inch and a half. Um, and getting that floor up a little higher so that my distance from the floor to the dashboard's uh, not so great. Uh, another issue I'm going to have to deal with, I'll probably have to put some access holes in the bed in order to get to these shocks um, over here, which that's not that big of a deal. Um, at any rate, um, over here, I've taken the roof off, as you can see, from the Camaro, and I've just, just uh, trimmed away the excess, you know, that large dash that comes all the way out to here for the, you know, the big windshield. So, you know, the actual cars way back here, pretty much in the stock location where they all are, human beings have to sit in these cars, so they have an ergometric uh, plot, plot plan, so to speak, for all of these cars and trucks to where, you know, you know, the distance to the foot pedals and the seat locations and all of that stuff. When you get it down to its bare essentials, you know, there's a floor pan out front and then there's this distance to the seat. And all of that stuff has to uh, figure into an average that they have figured out as a standard for um, everybody who's going to buy one of these cars. But anyway, I digress, as they say. Um, I'm just cutting this straight across right where the firewall is right now. As you can see, um, that's the intake for the uh, cold air. So I'll have to engineer that in once I get the other car dropped down and see where this all has to be cut back over here um, to accommodate that... Um, windshield bed on that car but uh, yeah that's where I'm at um, I thought a little while uh, long and hard how I was going to do it first I was just going to take the front section and start to fit that up and then work the back section later but then I thought you know what I think I'll just extend this platform right where it sits uh, the proper distance get my wheelbase and um, put some frame rails in there temporary or whatever I have to do to get this 
thing to be able to get completely skinned and wheeled up underneath the other car so I can start dropping it down to see exactly what I got a clearance, you know, in this area over here, uh, how much more I've got to take out, say, in this uh, area where the A post is. This is a pretty strong point here, but I might have to trim it all the way up to here, for this inner structure here. Um, I'll be favoring any structure that's already on the Camaro because um, it's the more modern of the two cars. So, um, uh, anyway, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, I just thought I'd show you where I'm at. All right, so I'm starting to uh, peel back the la layers on this uh, Camaro. Uh, and, um, well, lots of guys, when they're doing these uh, body swaps, like to go wild with the, uh, the saws off. Um, I like to take a little bit more of a methodical approach, not because it's better, it just works for me. Um, I like to be able to peel back the layers, um, drilling out some of the spot welds and sometimes just cutting through, taking little sections at a time out to see uh, uh, what needs to be kept and what can go. Um, but I want to see how the thing is constructed first uh, to make sure that I don't eliminate anything that's uh, unnecessary to eliminate. Um, based on what I'm going to be doing here in the future. I mean, bottom line is I've got to get back to uh, this pinch weld over here so everything on this side has to go. But um, I'm realizing that there's a lot of structure here in these uh, these uh, uh, rockers on these cars. Um, this is quite a substantial rocker. I mean, it comes out quite a bit. There's uh, quite a few layers here. And um, as you can see... Uh, you know, people don't think these cars have frame rails, but this is pretty. This is the frame rail, basically, much more substantial than the old unibodies uh, back in the day. Um, there's uh, this is pretty thick stuff here, and this goes all the way around from here all the way down to the pinch weld on the bottom side. So that's a pretty substantial member that's hidden underneath of the uh, the decorative rocker, which is just sheet metal. Anyway, um, I'm gonna have to replace that uh, structure inboard here. Uh, on the bottom side so somewhere's in this cavity below here uh, i'm gonna have to fit in uh, at least a two by three rail going from one end of the car to tie both the clips the uh, front and rear um, clip, uh, frame rail extensions on both sides there plus this is going to be lengthened so i need something to do that extension also so yeah these cars are pretty strong i'm really surprised at uh, how well these uh, 99 uh, gm cars are built I mean, look at the inner structure here. It's all so clean, um, no rust. Um, you'd be su I'm surprised to see that. Um, everything's well coated and um, very clean, like it just came out of the factory. All right, so I'm continuing to whittle away and get it paired back to just what I need. Um, this pan's gonna have to come out. As like I said, this holds the gas tank. It's gonna have to move back here, so this trunk pan's gonna have to be eliminated. But I'm down to the, about the, the top of the frame rails here. Um, a little bit of sheet metal that has to be trimmed down here eventually. But I want to drop this down on the car first to see what's going on. The other thing I'm going to do right now, for now, is I'm going to leave these frame rails on the outside. Um, <clears throat> mainly because, you know, having worked with the LX platform, um, the distance from the pinch weld to the center of the hub over here was different. And a little bit more actually a little more ideal it left a lot of meat left in here uh, to transition into the, the front um, inner, uh, inner fender walls and uh, the shock towers and there's a lot of strength left to it by the time you got it trimmed out to where you could drop the other body on well this uh, um, body's going to be set set a little bit forward in other words see this line right here well what I've got over there it's a very narrow uh, but it starts here and goes to here which means I have to cut out all this material well uh, I'll be down to the final layer which is just one piece of sheet metal and I've got you know a lot of weight still on this so I don't want this to bend this frame rails tied in all the way up into here as you can see this goes around the corner it's a lot of beefy structure right here so I go removing this and this thing here is just going to be a flimsy piece of sheet metal about that narrow holding the whole front end on so I'm gonna leave that go and um, Wait until I have <clears throat> the ability to put a frame rail in uh, the entire length after I cut this and section it and push this back and then put that under frame rail in, that 2x3 uh, piece that I want to 
weld in from one end to this car to the other in order to stiffen this all back up for all the structure that I'm removing. Anyway, uh, that's where I'm at right now, and I'll just uh, keep whittling away. This side over here is giving me a little bit of a... I managed to save that quarter panel just by drilling out all the uh, factory spot welds, popped, clean, popped cleanly loose, no problems. Uh, this side over here, uh, I started getting into this area here, and there's a little bit of Bondo in here, and I don't know why, because it's all factory factory uh, welds, you know, all the way along here, around there, down the side, all around here, till about the midway in this lip, and then all of a sudden there's these jagged uh, uh, welds, um, like a um, MIG weld, and then they're just ground off smooth, so uh, they're uh, giving me these large holes that I'm having to drill out here to try and get all the weld gone from some sort of a repair done whenever I have no idea but um, it's only in this front section from mid mid wheel and it's just in this area here this door jam and that section there and there's a little bit of mud little bondo as you can see down in here but uh, who knows what that was all about maybe it was just a door damp dent that they had to drill us out so that they could get in there and straighten it back out or something crazy like that either way um, I got to get them welds out because I was going to try and take these panels up, but it's no way. It's, it's, the metal's too heavy and it's too complex, so I got to get this lightweight skin off of here, and uh, then I could proceed the way I did over there, which was straight ahead, just taking each layer off at a time. Anyway, that's where I'm at. Uh, we'll keep on digging. Well, here's my answer as to why this quarter panel wouldn't come off cleanly and why there was so much uh, MIG welding. Uh, where there should have been spot welds. Apparently there was a repair, partial repair done here. You can see this patch right here. And you can see uh, it was all continuous welded along here. And there's the stock piece because I drilled out all the welds up to this point cleanly and then it started to fight me. It just wouldn't come off. So uh, at the top it was time to cut bait and uh, just get the thing off of there because it was looking pretty nasty and it wasn't going to be of any value to anybody. And uh, there you have it. Uh, somebody did a repair, partial, and, um, uh, it, uh, you know, once they're MIG welded on there, it's kind of hard to take it off other than wasting it. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so, whittling it down to uh, what I need here. Again, I'm going to leave the frame rails over here on until I have this thing cut and the frame rail put underneath of it uh, to lengthen this uh, platform. In the meantime, uh, I'm just cutting some pieces out that uh, I have to save. This is one of them right here. Uh, the gas tank uh, in this car is presently over top of the axles. So um, what I've done is I've cut this uh, piece out from the center where you can see that it has the braces and everything for the, the uh, gas tank straps right here. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to relocate it just behind the axle. That will allow me to drop it down a couple of inches, um, whatever I need to uh, clear the bed over there and make it fit underneath the bed. So that way I'll have the, uh, the correct cradle for the plastic uh, gas tank to fit into. I don't have to create something or fab it up. It's already there. So um, I may end up having to use some of this other steel, but uh, for right now I just needed the basics, the, uh, the reinforcements and the main panel uh, to hold the gas tank. And, uh, and once that's out of the way, then I can kind of refine things over here, see what else I need. But um, can't get too carried away <clears throat> or else you'll end up with a floppy mess here. So it's getting close to me needing to reinforce everything again, keep everything straightened out. But um, that's where I'm at right now, just sawing away in between things. Okay, so I'm uh, at the point where I need to get this thing outside and uh, uh, do a little bit of pressure washing underneath here. There's a lot of, a lot of grime, a lot of mud, and things I don't feel like. Uh, fall into my face over the course of trying to work out what's going on here. Um, you know, all the, any spot welds I have to get to are all hidden by, you know, looks like some undercoating, but some of it looks like just mud, like over there. It's just mud. 
And I think I put that on there trying to get out of a ditch over here. So anyways, there's a lot of that under there and I got to get it outside. So I just built this uh, two by four dolly uh, real quick. Um, you know, it be, would be nice to have permanent uh, uh, fixtures like this, but there's just no room. So it pays to just have a stack of two by fours that you could uh, build something like this real quick, some dolly wheels. Um, I got pneumatic tires thinking that they'd be better to roll over that gravel out there, but um, I probably should have gone with a harder wheel because they're too small to really be effective as a pneumatic wheel. If it's going to be a pneumatic tire, it should be a whole lot bigger than that if it's going to go over that gravel. Um, I feel like these are going to get stuck out there, so I got to get something out there, maybe some 2x12s, lay it on the on the gravel, give myself a little track to pull it out there on. So um, I don't have those for, for now, I'm just going to leave it right here. But the um, main thing I want to do is get it off the uh, the hoist chains and build this rig here uh, to where uh, it was solid enough to where I could wheel this thing around while, uh, you know, fear of uh, it falling over. Anyways, that's where I am right now. And um, like I said, uh, it's just a temporary dolly. I'm going to use it for, for this one uh, little adventure here. And then uh, I'll be unscrewing all these pieces and stacking them back up on a rack getting them back out of my way once I'm done with this but I'm also going to have to get this uh, uh, Camaro chassis outside and do the same but with that at least I can still got the uh, suspension on it so I can put it on I can put it on four tires and I can roll it out there and um, and then once it's outside I can jack it up in the air high enough to where I can uh, I can get under it and uh, you can see there's a lot of dirt and undercoating I don't know what's what but uh, it was all falling in my face while I was underneath there like to get it cleaned off just a little bit more before I start doing any fabrication on this uh, platform. Anyway, that's where I am with this. All right, so we're back inside uh, after I pressure washed the car, uh, car yesterday <clears throat> outside and um, got most of the big chunks out. So while I'm working on it, I don't have to get uh, dirt in my face uh, the entire time. There's still some undercoating under there, but not much. Didn't have much to start with, but um, anyways, I've uh, been whittling away at this uh, some more, uh, narrowing it down, finding out uh, some things that I'm not too, a little too happy with. One of them is that this tread width is a little bit wider than um, than I need it to be as far as fitting nicely up underneath that, uh, that car over there. So I might have to play with the wheels and tires a little bit, and also I might have to do some alterations to the... Uh, to the wheel openings um, you know take some uh, material out of the inside possibly uh, and rebuild the uh, wheel tubs um, we'll see I don't know what the solution to that's going to be um, I don't want to go crazy you know wide bodying it or doing anything nuts like that because uh, you know I just don't want to it's a it's a pretty nice piece just sitting the way it is I don't want to compromise the integrity of that box of that bed any more than I already have it's it's pretty stout uh, and there's no rust issues or anything like that so it's one dent on the other side that I have to deal with that but that's about it it's a pretty uh, pretty clean car anyway enough prattling on uh, this is where I'm going to end it uh, on this video it's been a couple of weeks uh, since I dropped the last video and um, uh, I don't know when the next one will be. I'm working on some uh, some projects, like I said, other than this, and so it's a uh, it's a little bit uh, slow, as they say, in the way of progress on this one. All right, so uh, I'll just leave it there, and I'll see you on the next one.